Hey guys, um, so today I'm going to be teaching you guys how I hatch these beauties. Some nice baby brine shrimp. And how I do it without making a big mess and get as high of a hatch rate as possible. Because you'd actually be really surprised at the difference it makes. Just a few small little things can cause you to either have a whole bunch of brine or just a big mess. So, uh... Yeah, let's get into this. So the first thing I want to talk about is this. My best friend here when it comes to hatching brine shrimp is my Gemco uh, brine shrimp hatchery. It's 900 milliliters of water, which is a great measurement because it makes everything else super easy. Uh, I'm going to be putting a link in the description of how to order this. Um, I mean, you can go straight to their website. My link, it's not sponsored or anything, so just... Uh, but yeah, they make great stuff. Gemco is an old school thing. All the old school fish keepers use Gemco. They make things straight up for fish hobbyists and they're great. Um, what's great about this is it has this valve in the bottom. So what happens is when you hatch them, um, all of, once you turn off the airline tubing, um, all of the shells, the hatch shells are gonna go up to the top and all of the uh, baby brine shrimp are going to go to the bottom. So you can just turn this, pour them all out, and stop it before um, the level reaches down there. And it makes it super easy for separating everything. Alright, so here is actually pretty much uh, step one, or the most important ingredient, the brine shrimp cysts, or eggs. Uh, I've got three different brands here. This one actually can't see the name. Uh, I'm actually kind of new to them, but they've been hatching great for me. These are the uh, your fish stuff ones that have also been great. And this empty one is from uh, San Francisco Bay uh, Company, and they've been great. Met the owner multiple times, uh, knows his stuff. These were great. All of which have about 80 to 90 plus percent hatch rate, which is something very important because obviously you don't want to have eggs that don't hatch. Specifically because it can actually be deadly to the fish, especially uh, fry, which are what most people hatch these for, can actually get blockages and choke and die on um, either the unhatched eggs or um, just the, uh, the shells. So make sure you do your best to separate them. If there's a few in there, uh, chances are nothing bad's gonna happen, but please do your best to separate them. If you have fish that aren't picky and don't necessarily need them to be moving to eat them, uh, you can Google it easy to see each species is different, but many species, the babies will go after anything. And in that case, you can actually switch to something like this which are called decapsulated brine shrimp eggs, which are basically the brine shrimp eggs put into a solution that kind of burns off the outer shell. So these are decapsulated. You can't hatch them, actually even if you tried, because once they decapsulate them, there's no way to hatch them. But um, this is basically the same thing that instead of hatching, you can just drop them in. And if the fish don't need movement, you know, if they don't need to see them wiggling, they need them. This is a hundred times easier and I very, very much recommend using this route if you don't need them. Um, and also they contain a ton of protein, which all of them do, but these haven't even used their uh, protein in hatching and stuff. And they're not feeding on um, their yolk or whatever it is that they feed on. So now, moving on from that, back to this, the hatchery. I've had this for probably five years or so, and it's just been a lifesaver. And what I started to mention earlier is great, is it's 900 milliliters, which you can easily measure up than what you need once you have it filled with dechlorinated tap water, then you can add salt, the salt that you need, and then the eggs. But given the measurement size, it's just a simple, a tablespoon of salt and a teaspoon of cysts, or less if you wanna make a smaller batch. 
So here I am with my roughly 900 milliliters of water ready to go. It's obviously dechlorinated. But before I go any further, I wanted to point out a few quick tips that also will help a lot with um, keeping your hatch rate up. When reusing something like this, you want to keep it sterilized. So what I usually use is a 10% bleach solution. So one part bleach to nine parts water and use that to wash it out in between to make sure everything's clear and good to go. Then rinse it out again afterwards after that. And that stops any buildup that will um, affect the hatch rate, any bacteria and things like that. Also, um, I personally like to use the salt that I use for my saltwater tanks. Um, I mean, it's a little more expensive than some other salts, but this seems to work the best for me personally. And it's, you know, it's really not that expensive and you barely use any. And so speaking of which, um, got my little measuring spoons. And as I said, it's super easy with uh, how they lay things out with this. So you just use one tablespoon of salt and then uh, the amount of cysts that you want to use anywhere from just, you know, a small amount up to one teaspoon. Um, so you want to add those. I used to do a full teaspoon, but you'd be surprised, especially when you're accurate and have a 80 to 90% hatch rate, you'd be amazed at how many come out. Uh, this right here is just a small part of, you can see I have a bigger bit of it there that I pulled it out of, but this was only, I don't know, a quarter of this maybe, uh, maybe a little more, maybe a third. Um, and that still has all those down there that are still hatching, which I'm going to keep going. Um, but yeah. All right. So here I go to dump in the salt. And actually what I just showed you isn't even close to what originally hatched because I just realized I've already fed many, many tanks. So this is nowhere near what hatched out of just a quarter of the scoop. So if you keep your hatch rate good, you can, a little bit of eggs can go quite a long way. All right, now I have just about everything ready to go. Normally when you purchase one of these, it actually comes with a straight uh, stiff tubing that also has a valve so you can control it and a little splash guard that uh, covers everything. But after using this for about five years and uh, actually not until like about a week ago, <laughs> I had everything together, but I had snapped the top and uh, somewhere in my room right now is the tube. So right now I'm actually using just regular tubing and I attached uh, this at the end just as kind of a weight to keep it down. But see, even without the parts that come with it, you can still keep it going. And have great hatch rates and everything. And so here you go. And so factors that are gonna affect this also are heat. Heat is one of the big ones. Um, you know, obviously the colder it is, the slower they're going to hatch, the warmer it is, the quicker with exceptions of, you know, gets too hot, they're going to die, gets too cold, they're not going to hatch and they're going to die. Um, so my fish room is actually heated. I have de dehumidifiers and such, which keep my temperature usually in the mid seventies in here, which seems to work just fine for me. Um, there's many different ways you can keep it warm. You can have a nice, a lot of people use a light over it, but also the light will attract the cysts once they hatch. So also if you're using something different from this, um, if you wanna get all of the, uh, the hatch cysts to get to one corner where you're gonna siphon them out or whatever, you can use a flashlight and set it up and they're all gonna come to that. And that way you can separate things really well or if you have a desk lamp over that's also gonna add heat that can keep it warmer to get uh, the hatch rate better and faster, or you can just wait a little longer. Um, but yeah, I definitely recommend keeping uh, in a warm environment, not really hot. I think kinda what you wanna keep your tropical tanks at. 
and yeah that'll work well for you and uh, after that you know within usually about 24 hours depending on the heat and such um, sometimes it takes a little longer but then you should have uh, a great hatch of brine shrimp ready to go feed all your baby fish or your nano fish so when filming that last little clip, I just realized I said to keep it about tank temperature and didn't think about the fact that we all keep different fish in different tanks at different temperatures. So uh, the best to go for would be about 80 degrees. Uh, if you have 76 to 78, that's fine. Uh, it'll take a little bit longer for the eggs to hatch, but other than that, you know, everything's fine. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know in the description if you want me to do more videos like this and to show how I culture other live uh, foods like um, Daphnia, black worms, stuff like that. Alright, thanks and I'll see you guys in the next one.